Good morning, friends. It's Pastor Lori from First UMC in Kirksville, and it's good to gather with you together today. On this Friday in February, we are coming up this Sunday on Transfiguration um, that we'll be talking about on Sunday, a time that some of the disciples followed Jesus up to the top of the mountain and had an experience that changed the way they saw him. Um, as I was thinking about that this week, I was reminded of um, one of the examples I'd given of this back when I was preaching down at La Plata. And I had had a message on Facebook, well, not a message, a memory on Facebook, remind me of a time when, at least on social media, folks were embroiled in a fierce argument. They were debating back and forth, and um, even the news broadcasters were weighing in on this fierce disagreement. Um, voices around the world were chiming in, and husbands and wives were like pitting against one another. Best friends were split on the issue. And what it was was the craziest thing. And it seemed really cut and dried. Some of you might remember this. There was a picture of a dress with stripes. And the question was, was the dress blue and black? Or was it white and gold? Now, I would have forgotten all about this kind of flash sensation, the way that social media things sometimes do, right? They come up and they're all we can think about for a little bit. And then something else comes along. The only reason I even remembered it at all, this has happened, what, like some nine, ten years ago now, is that one of my Facebook memories showed me a post I had made of my own reaction to discovering that in the afternoon, the dress looked blue and black, whereas in the morning, I had been certain that the dress was white and gold. And... I was shocked, and suddenly in the afternoon I could see what the other side was talking about, and they didn't seem quite so crazy after all, because in the morning I had would have told you it was white, it was gold, it was light colors. How on earth could somebody be thinking it was black and blue, these dark shades like the curtains behind me? But in that moment in the afternoon, when I simply pulled up my phone and there again was a picture of this silly dress and I saw it in a different light. And it completely changed my perception of things. And so I'm curious if you've ever had a time like that, maybe a time that you were absolutely certain that you were seeing things as they were. And maybe you had even argued until your last breath because you knew that this was simply reality. Anybody who saw things differently, well, obviously had to have a few screws loose, right? Or were drinking the Kool-Aid or however we might describe those times where we think somebody else has things all wrong, that our way of seeing things is obviously the way it actually is. But sometimes in life, we get a glimpse, um, and those are great gifts when those times come. Those times we get a glimpse that maybe there is another way to view something that maybe our perspective isn't the only one there is, that there are multiple facets to this. There's an old story, um, I think it hails from India, about seven blind men and an elephant, right? And the elephant is huge and each of them can only experience the elephant by reaching out with what they can touch with their hands. And so one of them argues up and down that an elephant is like a tree, right? It's trunk, strong and stable. And another one says, no, 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 that's not what an elephant is at all. An elephant is smooth and slick and it's curved and it's small. 
And well, somebody else yet says, no, 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 no. An elephant is not solid. It's, it's moving. It's, you know, bending. It's winding. It moves all on its own. Yet another one says, oh, that's, none of those are an elephant. An elephant is like a fan bringing the breeze. It's, you know, paper thin. And of course, then there's the image that goes along with it that shows that they are all reaching out and touching a different part of the elephant. And so while each one is completely accurate in their own perception of what the elephant is, none of them have the full picture of an elephant. And I think about this as we come into transfiguration, right? This fact that when it boils down to it, our perception is limited, especially when we get into things of who God is, who Jesus is, um, how some aspects of the world work, right? We know what we've experienced. We know what we've been taught. Um, we know what we can tell from our perspectives. And sometimes those are very different from what somebody else has experienced and been taught. And, and while there are some things that we can boil down to a this is right and this is wrong, this is the way it is, this is the way it isn't, there are so many things in life that are far too big to be contained by any one perspective. And I think as we think about the transfiguration, as we think about the disciples who had already been traveling with Jesus for quite a while, when they see this new light of who Jesus is, a figure, uh, actually a literal light in the story, right? They're actually blinded by the dazzling brightness of Jesus on that mountaintop. It brings them a new understanding and it leaves them, um, hopefully with some humility and some understanding that maybe, maybe there's more to the story than what they had originally thought. And so maybe as we go into this transfiguration, maybe a time will come to your mind of a time in life where you came with a new understanding. Maybe it helped you understand God better. Maybe it helped you understand someone in your life better, that you could somehow see how they came um, to the perspective they had. And even if you didn't agree with them, maybe you could at least see a little more where they were coming from. The other thing I wanted to share today, uh, it's not exactly a straight tie, but I was reading a reflection from Joyce Roop. She has written a lot on different ways of experiencing God in the world. And she told the story in one of her newsletters about um, how God's presence shows up in different ways and that sometimes it is a very big miraculous we know we know this is God through some very supernatural kind of way the burning bush the mountaintop transformation and that other times God shows up in this presence of a very human and very simple action and the story she wanted to share was one that had stayed with her. Um, it was titled, I am wherever there is love. And it was a story that took place back in 2006. A woman named Joy Scribner had a four year old daughter and they had an aging dog who had died. And the little girl was so sad, but she wanted to ask God to take care of their dog, Abby. And so um, she asked her mom to help her write a letter to God. So the mom got out a sheet of paper and helped her do that. And the little girl wanted to include a photo of the dog so that God would know which dog was there. So they put a photo inside the envelope and addressed it to God and popped it in the mailbox. Now, the mom, of course, is thinking that's the end of it. The post person would pick up the mail and take it off. It would wind up being tossed at the post office. Um, <clears throat> and that was the end of the story. But then what happened was a few days later, at the front door, a package arrives. No postmark, just a beautifully wrapped package. 
And it was a copy of a book that Mr. Rogers had written called When a Pet Dies. And there was a little note inside, and it was signed from God. And the note said, um, the little girl's name was Meredith. It said, Dear Meredith, your dog Abby arrived safely in heaven. Having the picture was a big help, and I recognized her right away. Abby isn't sick anymore. Her spirit is here with me, just like it stays in your heart. Abby loved being your dog. Now, since we don't need our bodies in heaven, I don't have any pockets to keep your picture in, so I'm sending it back to you. Thank you for the beautiful letter, and thank your mother for helping you write it and sending it to me. Goes on to say, you know, you've got a wonderful mother, and I'm so glad I picked her especially for you. I send my blessings every day and remember that I love you very much. And then the letter ended. By the way, I'm easy to find. I am wherever there is love. And it was signed God. Now, what, what a story, right? Um, certainly not what anybody expected. And for that little girl, um, I'm guessing she must have felt seen. She must have felt known. She must have had a new understanding of the presence of God. And so I share that today because, right, sometimes God's presence comes in the big wows of the things that absolutely have a supernatural kind of way. And other times they come through the day to day. Sometimes they do come through the hands of the people we know. They're not always anonymous things like this. Sometimes it's the person we know who shows up on our doorstep with something at just the right time, who says just the right words in just the right way. All those ways that we sense God's presence. And often through that, we get a little wider perspective of God's love. And so as we move into this week ahead, we know we've got Valentine's Day on Wednesday, which also is Ash Wednesday. So that's kind of a strange combination sometimes, right? This day where our culture says, celebrate all the love with all the chocolate and all the hearts and all the red. And at the same time, in our church calendar, Ash Wednesday, maybe it is fitting. God says, return to me. Come back to me, because at the end, you started from dust that you were created from, and at the end, that's where you'll wind up, and I am with you at each step along the way. So friends, as we go into this weekend, we hope you can join us on Sunday, either online or in person. Um, Reverend Jennifer will have our transfiguration message. And then we hope next week to see you at our Ash Wednesday services as Lent begins again. So again, know that those perceptions of who God is can change out of the blue. Sometimes on a day you didn't expect it, a very normal everyday day. And suddenly there's something new that you've learned about God. Maybe it's happened before. Maybe it'll happen today. Maybe some other day. But we can trust that God's presence is always with us. And that indeed, God is wherever there is love. So go in peace, friends. Take care, and I'll see you back here again next week.